We are human beings. We like to appreciate the beauty that surrounds us. We like to feel the wind gently patting our faces. But we cannot live life to its fullest if we do not question ourselves and think about it all. And mathematics certainly illustrates our amazing cognitive capacities and our unbelievable intellectual power. It pursues the highest standards of grasping by claiming rigor in its foundations and in its unfolding. Knowledge has to be a constant in our lives, like the tides are perpetual in the ocean. This means that mathematics is built on games of what if, played by mathematicians who make up sets of rules called axioms and then explore the consequences of following those rules, giving birth to theorems. No matter how much humans enjoy eating and sleeping and having fun with friends, we can't deny that some rigorous, deep thinking is indispensable. That is why mathematics is that important. Now that we know what math is about, another question arises. Did we find it or did we create it? Everybody agrees that math helps us unfold reality. But is it a tool we develop to make things easier? Or is it the language of the universe itself? Would mathematics exist if people didn't? The advocates of mathematical realism claim that nature seems to be full of mathematical properties. For instance, let's take a look at the Fibonacci sequence. The first two terms are equal to 1, and we get the next ones by successively adding up the previous pair of numbers. Furthermore, the quotient between two successive Fibonacci numbers gets closer and closer to the golden ratio, which usually originates an aesthetically pleasing proportion. Leonardo Fibonacci, who lived in the 12th and 13th centuries, stumbled across this sequence while studying the behavior of a population of rabbits, but it can be found in many other places, such as the pattern of the florets of a flower, the bracts of a pine cone, or the scales of a pineapple. Some of the most known realists were Pythagoras, who believed that rational numbers were living entities, and also Kurt Gödel, who said that we could perceive math in a manner analogous to sense perception. Last but not least, more animals seem to have some ability to count and babies get the notion of quantities before they even learn how to speak. However, there are also many people who believe that math is merely a product of the human brain a tool that we created in order to conquer the world by developing useful but artificial order out of chaos. They state that realists have been seduced by an overstatement of their successes and analytical equations only approximately described a limited subset of all the phenomena around us. One way or another, we can't deny the overwhelming power of mathematics and its applications in the real world. So, where would we be without math? Possibly in the Stone Age. But since that is a little bit difficult to imagine, let's just take a look at how different our lives would be nowadays. 
it's obvious that there would be no simple objects like watches or calendars and there wouldn't even be money since we wouldn't have the idea of measurement. But let us assume that money would exist in order to make things a little bit spicier and also that you have a bank account. Imagine that you want to buy a coat through online shopping and purchase it using your credit card. Is it safe to do that? Fortunately, in order for us to have safe online transactions, we don't have to travel to some distant galaxy. Because here on Earth in 1977, three cryptographers developed the RSA algorithm, which allow us to keep our credit card number a secret. As you know, every integer number can be factored using prime numbers, which are divisible only by themselves and by one. Now, you should notice that multiplying two large prime numbers is very easy, but finding the prime factorization of a gigantic number is extremely hard. The RSA algorithm is based on this fact. But hold on a second! How would you find the best online clothing stores if there were no mathematical algorithms that allowed us to organize billions of web pages in the search results? In fact, there must be page ranking methods in order to organize search results. For instance, the page rank algorithm used by Google functions by taking into account the number and quality of links to a page to decide how important a website is. It is assumed that more relevant websites are more prone to receiving more links from other websites. Let's say that page B has links to both pages A and C. Page C only has a link to page A and page D has links to all of the other pages. The page rank will be equal to 0.25 in the beginning. After the first iteration, page B transfers half of its original value to pages A and C. Then, page C transfers all of its existing value, 0.25, to page A. Finally, since D has three outbound links, it sends a third of 0.25 to all other pages. We conclude that page A will have a page rank of approximately 0.458. Obviously, things get more complex when we consider more than 4 billion web pages. But now, let's take a rest and watch some cool cat videos. When you are watching a video, virtually there is no bit going wrong. This means that the strings of ones and zeros that are behind the video cannot have errors in it. However, while huge binary sequences take over the internet, some errors are imminent and even the smallest ones can be disastrous. Error-detecting codes introduce mathematical tools to detect these losses. So, next time you are procrastinating watching kitty cat videos, you must thank mathematics and be really grateful for it. Technology plays such an important role in our lives nowadays. So, if there were no math, then I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be there. Thank you for watching and math on!